Yo, what's going on, people? And uh, yeah, I said I wanted to upload a different type of content, so uh, let's see how this goes. Here are my top three games that I was the most hyped for, but turned out to be bitter disappointments, and they kind of died shortly after release. And um, you know, my suggestions on maybe how they could bring fans back to some of these games. So coming in at number three is going to be For Honor. Uh, For Honor was unique. I can't. I have to get it. That it was unique. I normally don't buy fighting games, but For Honor had me hooked. Like everyone was playing the beta. I think it released two betas. Everyone was on it. Um, I planned to buy it. I bought it. My friends were planning to buy it also. But uh, during the beta, it had some like connection issues, no network issues. But you know that was excusable because it was a beta until it launched and turns out it just had peer-to-peer -peer connection and not dedicated servers and that was the main reason that this game died because a lot of people liked it but it makes no sense buying a game if you can't even connect to lobbies properly and in some of your matches people would be um, just dropping out or teleporting and lagging it, it is a terrible mess and there are no releasing dedicated servers for this game like an entire year later and unfortunately I think it's too late because they missed their window of opportunity because Dragon Ball Z Fighter just dropped and tons and tons of people are liking that so I don't think this dedicated server thing that they're bringing out is gonna bring fans back to this game they missed their window of opportunity however um, I still like the game I still play it occasionally so maybe when the dedicated servers come out I would be able to join a lot more matches because at this point in time I'm in matchmaking for a very long time. I'm not sure if it's because of where I am in the region but for those like global events that they have whenever I try to connect I never got into any of those events. Um, I can't even get into some of the new modes that they came out with. I think it's called Tribute. I can't join those matches so I pretty much just play um, Brawl 2v2 or the one-on-one -on -one duels every now and then and then they just go off but they're still adding stuff to the game cosmetics wise but in terms of how to improve or what might bring people back to this is they should copy the formula of what they do with Rainbow Six Siege because they're both under like the same uh, company Ubisoft so I don't know how they're letting one game be so successful and the other is just kind of there like by the wayside because Siege now has over 25 million players that is a lot of players and For Honor is just there. It doesn't, it's not fully dead, but you know, a large portion of people stopped playing because of these connectivity issues. And like I said, they missed their window of opportunity. So, Siege has every now and then they would do like these free weekend trials, one. And secondly, the game is always on sale. You can find it for like $30, $40 on PSN sales or Steam. And it baffles me because this game is so popular and it's always on sale and they're always having these free trials that new people could come and play it. And For Honor does none of this. For Honor is never on sale and it doesn't do these free weekends. I don't know why. It's like your game doesn't have that much people. You, you know, do free weekends every now and then to, you know, like just let people come back and try it to see if they like it. Or attract even some newcomers so yeah they should put the game on sale every now and then and also do the free weekends like how Rainbow Six Siege does because I'm actually tired of running into the same players in matchmaking all the time I'm starting to see the same names pop up and I also want to try ranked mode again I only got ranked like once and I got to like silver 3 and I wasn't able to connect so I don't know if I just can't connect to any ranked matches or if people are just not playing ranked anymore but I still like this game and I would like to see it be revived. Not to mention that those DLC characters need to be nerfed. All of them. But anyways, um, coming in at number two, Lawbreakers. Yeah, I was... I actually love this game. I streamed this game so much. I played the beta, I did reviews of the beta, I did a review of the full game, it's up on my channel. And then this game just up and died. Lawbreakers failed, like, it could be a number of reasons why this game died. First of all, it could be how they marketed it, I don't think it was marketed that well. It didn't get a lot of exposure, one, and two, the ads that they ran were basically saying, if you're not skilled, don't buy this game, because it, you know, super hardcore, and then when you actually played it, it was like, yeah, it takes some skill, but it actually wasn't that bad, so I think that may have turned away a lot of casual people, my friends included, because... You know, when I was like, guys, let's try this game, 
and they were like, I don't know, this, this looks like super hard and super complicated. Once I finally convinced them to download the beta and try it, they actually liked it. So yeah, maybe how they marketed the ads could have turned away the casual people, one. Two, the game did not launch on Xbox. This isn't saying that um, PS4 or PC only exclusives can't survive, but I'm just saying I didn't know who Cliffy B was until this game came out. Apparently he's responsible for the Gears of War series, and I know a lot of people on Xbox love that game. So it kind of, you know, turned his back on a large number of fans, I would say. Um, also, if you want the widest amount of customers, just release the game across all three platforms. So th that could have been done. So, what really killed the game for me is the gameplay changes that they made. So, first of all, when the game launched, it had some bugs and some issues. They patched those, fine, you couldn't buy any cosmetics, they patched that too. But, then, I don't know if they saw that people weren't buying the game, so they decided to appeal to the more casual players, and they decided to add regenerative health. That's the first problem. The second problem is then they decided to boost everyone's health, which completely threw the game off for me and it killed um, how fast paced it was. So the problem with regenerative health, one, the game has health stations, so those were all rendered useless because why would I run to a health station if I can just sit in this car and my health is going to regen eventually. Not to mention you'll be in shootouts with multiple people and what they do is just hide behind a wall because once you stop taking damage for a certain amount of time your health is just going to start regen. So I'll be shooting at somebody, they just hide for a second, health regen a bit, and then they come back out again. And every class does not have the same amount of health. So the classes that I like to play are more fast paced, so I have less health. And then I go up against the Juggernaut, which has the most health in the game, and armor on top of that. So trying to kill him before they added the regenerative health was already a task, they just made it 10 times harder. Secondly, the added health to every class took away the risk and reward. One, I can now do careless and reckless shit because I know I'm not going to die as fast. And it also takes longer to kill people, so they kind of kill the fast-paced momentum. Like I said, the classes I like to play are fast. Um, I used to play the gunslinger, and I'm supposed to take on one enemy at a time from like a distance. Now, before... Um, Depending on how good you can aim, it takes about, you know, half the amount of bullets in your gun to kill someone, then you can use it half to kill somebody else and reload. So about two kills if you could aim pretty good, um, excluding headshots. With the added health and the regenerative health, it takes about an entire clip to kill someone. And that's if they don't run and hide and regen, because then I have to end up reloading, and then it just takes too long to kill people with certain classes. It, it just threw off the balance and the entire feel of the game. Not to mention the player base also started dropping off, so getting into matches was getting harder and harder until I would be literally in matchmaking for 10 minutes. And then it was like, you know what, it's time to delete this game because I can't get in any matches. My suggestion how to fix this game, make it free to play. The game was originally supposed to free to play, but then they decided to make it um, for $30. So just make it free to play. I'm more mad at the fact that I bought this game and I don't have anyone to play it with. If you made it free to play, I'm not mad that I pay for it already. I, I would just be glad that I can actually play it again and have people to play it with. But yeah, take away the regenerative health and other stuff and make the game free to play again. And coming in at number one, the game that I was the most hyped for out of all three of these games. Out of the out of all of last year, I watched every single teaser, trailer, every article that was about this game I read. Until I played it and it was just fucking disappointing. Ghost Recon Wildlands, please take the stage. This game, I hate to be that guy, but I'm gonna be that guy. I'm sorry, but if your open world game is not to the quality and standard of Grand Theft Auto, it's gonna fail. Like, I try not to compare games, but Rockstar has set the bar so high when it comes to open world games in terms of uh, how immersive it is. Um, the quality is so high that after playing Ghost Recon Wildlands beta for like an hour and a half, I was done. It's like, this is so bland. I'm done. And then the full game dropped and I was thinking, that, you know, they would add some extra stuff. That's just the beta. They were just letting us play an early version. Nah, it, it was still the same. It, it was ultimately very disappointing. It was like, it was like a ghost town basically. Um, the cars 
were handling terribly. Well, maybe they don't handle that bad, but like I said, after playing Grand Theft Auto for years, I get accustomed to a certain quality. And yeah, the cars were handling bad. I hated the characters. I just wanted to shut up because they wouldn't stop talking and telling corny jokes. The gunplay was meh at best. And yeah, the story wasn't all that. So Ghost Recon Wildlands is the most disappointing game that I was hyped about. Um, they even dropped the a PvP update. I tried that and it was still a no for me. So yeah, these are my top three most disappointing games that I was hyped for. I'm hoping the games I'm looking forward to this year don't let me down. That's going to be a separate list that I do. So if you like this video, you could leave a thumbs up. And if there are any games that you were extremely hyped for that turned out disappointing, you could let me know in the comment section down below and uh, subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.